Flexing is an art. As I've mentioned in my previous flex video, when I talked about Madara, most people think the biggest Madara flex is when after he drops meteor number one, he says, ha ha, how are y'all gonna stop this second meteor? Now that is a show of power. What, in my opinion, was a bigger flex on his part was when he said to the five Kage, yo, five Kage, I know I'm completely bodying you with just wood clones, but uh, do you want the wood clones to also use Susanos? By the fact that he's asking them this question, putting the option in their hands, I personally consider that an even bigger flex. A flex I have not mentioned in regards to Madara due to an oversight on my part was when Kabuto undid the reincarnation and all of his reincarnated peoples that he was using as chess pieces to fight with started crumbling. Madara was just like, meh, I won't die. And deciding not to die was enough for Madara to keep living. Now that is an epic flex. But why am I mentioning all this here? Is it because I didn't have a different idea for an intro of this video? No. Is it because I wanted an excuse to talk about that scene where Madara was like, nah fam, I'd rather not die please, and he just didn't? Maybe. Or is it because I wanted to use Madara as a perfect segue to talk about another one of the Naruto flexes that I always considered my favorite in the series? Yes. But before doing so, I would like to let you know something of great importance. On the last video, I asked for 50,000 likes, something I very seldom have reached on this channel altogether, and I said that the next one would be out within a week. Well, being that you can see that this one is out within the week of the last, you know that you reached the like goal. In fact, you pretty much destroyed it. As of right now, Biggest Flexes in Anime 3 is my most liked video on the entire channel, and I am forfeiting sleep for now, because honestly, these videos are so fun to make, and the fact that you like them so much really inspires me and gives me the kick in the pants I need to pop out more of these bad boys. Also, fun fact, after doing all these flex videos, which have approximately eight entries each, I will be doing a tournament bracket debating which of these flex characters are the biggest flexer of all. And that will be on All Day Anime's channel. Link to his channel is in the description. We've already done these tournament brackets on the previous ones. They are a hell of a lot of fun. Check them out and send my regards. The community is really coming through here in an amazing way to the point that other YouTubers have messaged me telling me how awesome the fan base is, which is so humbling, and really thank you all so much. So, that said, 60,000 likes and biggest flexes in anime 5 will be out within a week. So, taijutsu the heck out of that like button, because we're talking about my favorite flex in Naruto, coming from nothing other than Rock Lee. So, Lee in early Naruto has a hell of a lot of flexes, and I will be talking about some of them just to hype up the grand finale which is his most epic of flexes, which you will soon see. In his first meeting of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, he completely defeats Naruto in one kick and completely overpowers Sasuke instantaneously as well. Until this point, Sasuke was prodigy kid that was like, oh my god, best rookie ever, and then in comes Lee, and without a single jutsu, busts Sasuke's balls all over the room. Someone had to do it. This was before we knew anything about Lee, but sooner than later, Lee became the protagonist of the Naruto franchise for a large portion of the Chunin exams, with his fight versus Gara really feeling like a ultimate climax of sorts that you expect capping off some massive journey. Speaking of, my favorite flex definitely does happen during that fight, but before briefly mentioning it, I would like to talk about when Lee fought Kimimaro, because the sound for four ninja that Orochimaru sent to infiltrate the Lee village get Sasuke and bring him back to his evil lair, because every villain needs an evil lair were all crazy powerful. These guys were almost Jonin level, and that's insane. Lee couldn't tag along with Shikamaru's group because he just got healed by Tsunade, and he was like too injured in shiz, but he don't care. He's gonna follow them anyway. The Sound 4 were preoccupied with their own different Genin who stepped up to the plate in very cool ways. Not the point! Lee fought Kimimaru, someone in charge of the Sound 4, and the one responsible for the defeat of the Kaze Kage. In case you didn't know, Kaze Kage is really high level, and his son, Gara, is the guy that bodied Lee in the Junin exams. Lee versus Kimimaro is thematically epic, and Kimimaro was too powerful for Naruto. He halted Naruto's progression to save Sasuke, and then Lee came and said, Naruto, you go on ahead, I'll take this guy. In the beginning, Lee was being defeated, but by accidentally getting drunk, injured Lee was over
overpowering Kimimaro to a certain extent. Even though he was an injured boy that couldn't use any ninjutsu and he was intoxicated, he was annihilating this super high level opponent and it was just so good to see my boy back in the limelight. I consider this a flex because from Kimimaro's perspective, it was this dude who is literally kicking his butt while drunk and the satisfaction of that is just too much for me. My favorite flex though comes from his fight versus Gara, and no, it's not all the epic flashy moves that he does throughout the fight, which are all awesome by their own right, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely when he like looks up to Guy Sensei and he's like, mm, and Guy's like, oh, okay, fine, you, you can use that move here, even though we were really saving it for the finals. Lee jumps on top of this massive stone hand, takes training weights out of his pant cuffs, and everyone in the stands are like, uh, training weights, like that's gonna make a difference, and then he drops them, and boom, they make such massive smoke clouds just due to the mass whacking into the pavement. It was terrifying. The entire arena was collectively holding their breath because Lee, this dude who was already doing decently against a monster like Gara, was carrying around potentially hundreds of pounds on his ankles. And this is how Lee was when he kicked the butts of everyone else in the tournament so far. Now, I consider this a flex because A, Lee didn't expect to need to take the these babies off until the finals. And B, he went to the highest point in the arena to do it just to see the massive smoke clouds. I mean, if he was like a humble gentleman, he could have taken them off on the ground and put them beside him, but no. He had to be like, all right, fam, this is what you're getting into. Drop, boom. I don't know. I think him going to the highest point to drop the training weights on top of the fact that he thought training weights on would be enough to defeat all these opponents together. This is my favorite flex in Naruto. Sorry, fam. Sorry, Madara. You got bodied by Lee. Aside from the time that Lee also kicked you in half, which was pretty dope. But in any case, next flex. Coming from my boy, Lad Russo from Bakano. So Bakano is an anime that I recommended many times, but I'm not going to say none of you listen to me, but I assume none of you have listened to me, okay? No one watches Bakano. It's insane. And every time I recommend this series to you, I do it from the perspective of the way the writing in this anime is some of the best of all time. Time, that it has the best dub in anime, that the way they jump from different timelines and the entire story gets tied together in such a nice bow is so brilliant, but none of that ever works because no one watches Bakano, so we're gonna try it from a little bit different perspective at this point. So Lad Russo is this dude in the mafia, and he's supposed to hijack a train called the Flying Pussyfoot. Yes, if the name Flying Pussyfoot is not enough of a flex for you. Okay, fine, that was a joke. That's not the actual flex. Anyway, Lad is on the train, messing shiz up, and what's even better than all of that is the fact that he gets all of his guys to dress up in completely white suits. In fact, Lad's white suit is the inspiration for Sea Dog's white suit on his YouTube channel, which I think is extremely dope because Lad's a mad lad. Get it? Mad lad. <laughs> Okay, fine, I'll stop. In any case, Mad Lad over here gets on the train and starts messing people up. He goes against guys with guns with his bare fists just because he could. He likes explaining to them exactly what type of punches he's throwing just so they could try to block it, but he's still gonna annihilate their face. And when I say annihilate their face, I literally mean their face looks like a sack of potatoes by the time he's finished with them. But now, none of this is exactly what I would consider a flex per se. The flex is the fact that he gets everyone to wear a white suit just because when he beats the crap out of his opponents and their blood is squirting all over him, everyone else will be able to see all that blood perfectly. If he'd be wearing something dark, like black or whatever, well, you wouldn't be able to see the blood stains all that well. But no, he's wearing a pristine white suit so everyone can see exactly how many people he's clobbered on his way there. And I think that in itself is quite the absolute mad lad of a flex. There are some other pretty dope flexes in Bacchanal like Claire Stanfield going up to Lad, who, in case you haven't noticed by now, he's a bit of a psychopath, not exactly the most mentally sound individual on the planet, and says to him, I'm not afraid you're gonna kill me. In fact, my imagination is not good enough to imagine a world where I will die. Pretty epic flexing right there, my boy. So fam, the takeaway message from all this is to please watch Bakano. It's actually really great. Next flex! Kanpachi Zaraki from Bleach. His entire presence is a 
a flex, as every scene he's in, he is flexing in some way or another. When he first meets Ichigo, he's excited to fight him, because perhaps he's strong, and because of his spiritual pressure alone, Ichigo's sword strikes just glance off of his skin. He wants to make sure Ichigo knows exactly the difference between them, and says, if you can't hone your spiritual pressure a hell of a lot more, you ain't gonna be able to do shiz to me when I'm not even fighting back. Now, this is the kind of guy Kampachi is. He's so badass, his extreme spiritual pressure forced his sword into its Shikai form without even bonding with it. In Bleach, you have to make a sort of friendship thing with your sword, and then it's like, okay, bro, we can take it to the next level, and Kampachi skips all of that. He's just too strong for the sword to sit in its normal form. And that, my boy, is while he's wearing his eye patch. So, Kampachi, he has these new world issues. He's like, oh, I hate it when I'm so strong. I hate it when I'm just like way awesomer than everyone around me. So I'm gonna wear this eye patch. So this eye patch thingo has some sort of device that we don't really explain how it works, but it absorbs my spiritual pressure. It does not let me output enough of it. So now that I'm severely handicapped due to this eye patch, when I fight my opponents, aside from the fact that I now don't have depth perception because I can only see from one eye and I have now a completely open side to their attacks. Also, I don't have nearly enough spiritual pressure to fight back at full capacity. Now, I can actually have fun fighting these really powerful opponents at their level. The reason why I really like this flex is it's not like Lee's training weights, for example, where Lee wore those weights to make himself stronger. It is to make him a better fighter in the future. Kampachi's like, nah fam, I'm wearing this eye patch so I can actually have a fair fight against these really powerful opponents as opposed to just completely overwhelming and annihilating them. It's not to make him stronger, it's to give him more of a rush in a fight. But also, Kenpachi is not a dick about it. When someone's handicapped in a fight, for the most part, they like letting their opponent know just how handicapped they freaking are. It's like, imagine an alternate world where Kenpachi is playing these battle royale first person shooter games, and the mad lad, he's gonna win, and he's gonna set himself certain parameters. He's not gonna heal, he's not gonna, I don't know, reload. Load. He's not gonna get a scope or whatever. I don't care what his parameters are. Maybe the guy will only use pistols instead of automatic weapons. I don't know. Point is, he's not gonna go around telling his opponent, all right, I, I hope we're gonna have a fun game, but I'm only gonna use pistols because hell, why not? It'll be more fun for me. No, he's not gonna tell them, so they think he's fighting at full power. So all of Kenpachi's flexing is done without the snobbiness to the flexes, making the flexing far superior. Since he's essentially doing this to get a fun fight in, he doesn't care if his opponents think he's flexing on them or not. And that's what makes the flexing so great. Because once his opponents surpass his expectations and, oh, I'm gonna have to actually take off my eye patch to fight you, the taking off of the eye patch is very powerful. It's him saying, okay, until now where you thought I was trying, well, I wasn't. None of this pussy footing around. Oh, I'm not really trying so that if you lose, you'll feel really stupid. And if you win, you'll also feel really stupid. None of that. This is legit flexing. Like when he's fighting against Inui Tora and Waco Mundo, having this epic battle, taking off his eye patch, things are going great. And he's like, all right, so it seems you actually are very strong and I am having fun. So now I'm going to hold my sword with two hands in instead of one. <laughs> That's satisfying shiz right there because neither the viewers nor Inui Tora knew that he was holding himself back all along and he wasn't gonna tell us because he doesn't care if we look up to the guy he just wants a fun fight that is the epic flexing I'm looking for in an anime character and that's why Kenpachi Zaraki has some of my favorite flexes in anime also he has a shoulder lolly which makes him immeasurably stronger but more on that another time next flex the philosophical master Aki Same from Kenichi, the mightiest disciple. Now, Kenichi has a lot of flexes, and I do recommend the series as a whole. However, the greatest of flexes in this series comes from the different masters in different martial arts. The story is about Kenichi, your average dude who wants to impress a babe, like, you know, your average dude likes to do. So he joins Ryo Zanpaku, this epic dojo with amazing masters to train him to actually become less of a pussy. That is the basic goal of these teachers. 
teachers. Now, every teacher is more badass than the last, and my personal favorite is Akisame, an absolute mad lad that also has sick one-liners. In any case, one day, when he and Kenichi go shopping, fun fact, when he and Kenichi go shopping, it means he sits on a platform with a lot of weights on it, and Kenichi has to pull it for his training. Yeah, Akisame is a bastard, but also a mad lad. Mm, maybe that's why I relate to him so much. In any case, they eventually run into a bunch of street thugs, and they want to teach them a lesson, like all street thugs seem to do. In fact, in anime, more often than not, when you are walking anywhere, you will encounter street thugs in order to show off how someone is overpowered. And in this case, we show off how Akisame is overpowered. Akisame walks up to street thug numero uno, who is, by the way, freaking huge, and says, look here, Kenichi, this is what you have to do while you're fighting an opponent that is much larger than you. First, this is what you should not be doing. Since he is taller than you, if he pushes you, he will completely win. Like this. Watch. Then big guy and he play mercy for a moment while he is standing completely still and big guy is pushing full force doing absolutely nothing to the mad lad because Akisame, well, his toes are holding him in place on a sewer cap on the ground. Yes, his toe muscles alone are stronger than his opponent. He is flexing on not only Kenichi but also his adversary by humiliating him, showing Kenichi what not to do in a real life fight. And then he's like, now this is what you do do. And then he hurls the bastard like four billion miles away, completely annihilating him. I don't know. I always love it when the senseis in anime are like, all right, this is what you shouldn't do in a fight. And then they do what you're not supposed to do and then completely annihilate them anyway, because just, you know, the strength in his big toe is far stronger than his opponent. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I thought this moment was completely amazing. Next flex. My boy Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter, the best character arguably in the series. And now most of you are probably thinking Hisoka isn't much of a flexer. I mean, the guy is a bastard. He is a mad lad. He does manage to beat everyone he likes fighting pretty much, except for like one dude in the manga. And even though he doesn't seem so overbearingly powerful with his abilities, he always manages to somehow win. It's, it's phenomenal. But does he really flex? And the answer to that is yes, he does flex indeed. So firstly, his ability is bungee gum. And as he tells us in every single frame he's on screen, bungee gum has both the properties of rubber and gum. He likes to let us know. He's like, yeah, you have like these crazy abilities that let you, I don't know, power up your pubic hairs to have super saiyan abilities transcending space and time. That's all great and fine. I have bungee gum, which by the way, possesses both the properties of rubber and gum. You know, these two completely useless substances and I will still destroy you. Yes, this is the beauty of Hisoka. Explaining his ability to such a dumbed down level and then annihilating you with that ability is quintessential flexing. I feel like the reason why it became a meme that he explains his bungee gums ability every time is because it's just so unfathomable that this dude can manage to take down these crazy opponents with something that's the properties of a rubber and gum. I mean, he's up against machine gun butler guy and the guy's firing coins at machine gun levels of speed, which, you know, machine guns are like really powerful. And he's like, yeah, but uh, did you know that technically uh, my, my bungee gum possesses the, the, the attributes of both rubber and gum? And then he proceeds to annihilate machine gun butler guy such a stupid freaking power but he ends up always winning with it and it's amazing now as far as his other flexing and he has other flexing it's like when he's fighting against that dude in the heavens arena arc pretty sure the guy's name was castro and castro was just like attacking him with these crazy attacks that makes his fist super powerful and ahsoka like lets his arms get chopped off just to flex on the guy that's brilliant just to scare the heck out of him that like oh my disembodied arm is still flexing flying around because it's actually secretly attached to my bungee gum with heads of property of both rubber and gum. This is so scary. He proceeds to win and then he's like, oh, Machi, please put my arm back on. I was just having too much fun. He didn't need to lose his arm. He let his arm get chopped off to psych out his opponent. And if that's not amazing flexing, I don't know what is. Next flex. It's from an anime that is airing right now called Vinland Saga. It is the best anime of the season. And if someone else says, well, actually, my opinion is that Dr. Stone slash Fire Force slash Don Machi is actually better. Well, it's not that they have a right to their opinion. This is one of those times that they are objectively wrong. I apologize if the facts sounded too harsh. 
In any case, in Vinland Saga, we have a mad lad, Thors. And Thors, not to be confused with Thor, his much weaker ancestor, Thors' ship gets ambushed by, like, two ships, each holding 60 men. Thors has a total of, like, 10 guys on his side, and most of them aren't even fighters. And he says to his 10 guys, you'll literally get in the way if you come along. Well, I got this, bros. So he jumps onto one of the ships, which has 30 dudes, and he proceeds to beat up every single man on that ship with his bare hands. The guy doesn't even draw his sword because it's easier to just walk through the guys taking them down like this. After the fight was over, when the enemies were tallying how many men died, they were like, oh, uh, we had like 30 casualties on that ship, but not a single one died. You see how Thors is walking through the men, taking them all down with his bare hands as they're running at him full force, and even the guys that he blasts off the ship, he then throws them oars as like miniature life rafts so they won't drown. The absolute Chad that is Thor's will go down in history as one of the most badass characters ever. Now, this all takes place in episode 4 of the anime, so if you don't want to check it out, why the hell do you not want to check it out? It's episode 4, damn it! It's not like, oh, you have to watch 140 episodes before it gets decent. Hell no! It gets good from the very beginning, and this absolute epicness of a brawl is episode 4. Check it out as soon as you possibly can, and I will not spoil for you the amazing amazing ending of episode four even though i normally would spoil i guess like an episode four because it's not that epic this is epic enough for me not to want to spoil okay watch it now i am being strong here but this is literally for your best interest i am doing this for the good of mankind you understand next flex and this is from akashi seijiro from kuroko no basket a basketball anime where for some strange reason everyone seems to have like superpowers i know not literally but if someone's like every time i shoot it automatically scores. If that's not a superpower, then I don't know what the hell we're watching. In any case, Hakachi's uh, power is basically very Sharingan-esque. The dude trained his eyes to such an insane degree that he can see the very nuances in the muscles of his opponents to know where they're gonna go before they actually go. It translates to some kind of foresight type thing. And because of this, he can make completely opposite movements, which would make his opponents want to now do the opposite of what their body is already in the middle of doing, which will cause them to trip okay this is like completely scientific as you can tell not at all super powerish but the point is the dude could make the people in front of him trip and of course like the absolute mad lad he is when he first meets kagami he wants kagami to know exactly where he stands and the answer is kagami doesn't stand he makes kagami kneel before him immediately saying know your place and kneel before the emperor i guess i would consider it flexing because if he makes his opponents trip in the actual basketball game well then that's not flexing. That's him using his abilities to try to win. That's like saying that, oh, that one time where someone used a strong attack against his opponent, that's like sort of flexing. No, that's not flexing. That's kind of trying to win. Madara dropping a second meteor is not as good of a flex as Madara telling the Kages, do you want me to make my wood clones use Susanos or not? Lee using his primary Lotus is not as good of a flex as Ni dropping his training ways from the highest point in the arena just so they can make massive smoke clouds when they hit the ground. However, Akashi putting his opponents on their knees before they actual fight is absolutely a flex. It's saying that I'm going to use this power that you cannot even understand just to let you know how beneath me you are. And beneath me you are. Because Akashi is like this slim build, thin dude. Everyone else on the arena is like double his size, except for the main character. And all in all, Akashi's physical presence isn't all that foreboding. But the moment he puts Kagami on the ground, and the moment he gets the ball for the first time, where he just runs through the entire main team, where they are just falling on on their knees in front of him. It is absolutely terrifying. And that is why Akashi is actually one of my favorite antagonists in anime, even though it goes very well unnoticed because it's like a sports anime. Antagonists aren't supposed to really be antagonists, but Akashi is. And Akashi telling Kagami to kneel before the emperor is a monster of a flex. Now, speaking of monster flexes, when Julius fought against Licht in one of the latest episodes of the anime, he had some pretty epic flexing going on there as well. I know it's not that noticeable because it was kind of a throwaway moment in the anime. The manga definitely did make it seem more badass. But when in the beginning he was flying around, fighting with Licht, and things are like, oh my god, both of these characters are so powerful, maybe even Licht is stronger. And they both land on the rooftop, and Licht is smiling, and Julius starts 
bleeding from his chest. One of Licht's many slashes actually hit him, and blood starts seeping out and ruins his, like, fluffy coat thingy that all emperors seem to need to wear because, no, it's probably not stuffy in that massive palace with four billion dudes in it. I'm sorry, I get ahead of myself. I'm a huge fan of air conditioning in case you haven't noticed. But after that blood seeps out and Licht is like, ah, you see, the one thing that can surpass time is in fact light. <laughs> You'll notice that wasn't an epic evil laugh, and that's because Licht doesn't deserve an epic evil laugh. Julius, on the other hand, might. Julius is like, oh yes, uh, I actually wasn't injured in years, but I kind of wanted this to happen just so I could show you that I could reverse time on my wounds, making me invincible. <laughs> That was deserving of a better evil laugh. I'm sorry, Lich. I don't know. Reversing time on all injuries is quite the power, I must say. And uh, we won't talk about its other uses. But the fact that he let Lich hit him so blood could come out, so Lich could be satisfied, just so he could say, Yo, bro, I'm so happy you did this. Now I can show you that I can reverse time in my wounds. You don't stand a chance against me, you little bitch. I think that's beautiful. And for the final flex in this video, I feel like it was long overdue. I had to talk about Kazuma from Konosuba. And his most powerful ability, Steel. Yes, Steel gives him the ability to steal an item from someone else's possession. Like, for example, when he fights the strongest swordsman in the entire fantasy world he now lives in, the swordman starts charging him. He uses Steel to steal the enemy's sword, a sword so powerful that he cannot wield it. However, since he stole it with his hand held high, it appeared in his hand and it was far too heavy and dropped with the flat side on his opponent's head, knocking him out. He won the battle without even being able to swing the sword. That is not flexing. That that is just purely brilliant strategic mind going on. And yeah, Kazuma is one of my favorite anime protagonists of all time. It was even on my list. Obviously, I respect this absolute Chad. Okay, maybe that does not perfectly describe him, but you get where I'm coming from. The steal ability holds another far greater use, and that is the ability to steal the panties of anyone around him by merely, you know, moving his fingers in very not at all creepy ways. That one I do in public for some strange reason, people find it weird. I don't know. If you point your hand that somebody and then just like start like making these motions they get really weirded out every time i do it and someone feels strange about it i'm like that's so weird if someone were to do that to me i wouldn't find it strange at all so then i just try it on other people and i get similar reactions i don't know but i do feel like it would be pretty sick if someone made it a social experiment and tried it in public a little just to see if it was strange and definitely send me a video of you trying that on twitter link to my twitter is in the description that would be very cool where was i oh yeah so uh him flexing by taking people's pants now, this is truly a great flex. Not only does he steal the panties to humiliate his adversary, but he then waves the panties around over his head in giant circular motions with the most maniacal evil laughter ever, which is essentially the equivalent of pissing on someone to mark your territory. As a huge Kazuma fan, nay, a Kazuma stan, I respect this dearly. And in fact, Kazuma then uses his steel power as an even greater weapon. When there's something he wants, he will just make these hand motions and Everyone in the vicinity will immediately know where he's coming from and they will be willing to do anything for him. It is the ultimate blackmail because without even saying a word, by just moving his fingers in this very not creepy fashion, why do people think I'm weird when I do this? Everyone around him immediately will pledge their allegiance to his majesty. Little do they know, his accuracy is not the greatest and he accidentally always steals Megumin's panties. But hey, since they don't know that, the flexing is absolute. Everyone is terrified before him as they should be and I wanted to make this the last one on the list just like the last one on my latest list was Vegeta flexing to sell how he's so strong letting cell power up and then cell annihilated him because you know what comedic flexing has its own value and it's not just the comedy it's the life philosophy that we're learning because he who controls the panties controls the universe and no it's not just that I wanted to say this line although this line is freaking awesome and I am keeping forever so with that whammon and gentle whammon definitely leave a like on this video 60,000 and the next one is out within a week. I enjoy making them so much. I made this one like a half an hour long just because I like gushing over these characters. I don't have to, but I wanted to. So fam, 60k likes and the next one will be out within a week. Smash that like button like you smash Megumin's panties, assuming Megumin would be over 18 years old. That was a weird metaphor. And also, join the weirdest family on the internet by subscribing to join the fan base. And also, so you can be noticed when Biggest Flex is an anime 5 probably pops
drops out within a week because the fan base are absolute mad lads. Link to my Twitter is in the description. Feel free to follow me there, as well as a link to my Patreon. All patrons are super duper invited to the Discord server, and really, you very much help the channel survive due to all the demonetization and stuff. It's extremely helpful. Everyone who pledges there, you're a beast, and I appreciate you. Also, link in the description to my good bud all day animes channel, where we will be debating which of these eight flexes was superiorist. That's not a real word either, but I'm going to be using it now. The most superiorist flex will be the victor of this round. Check him out in the description. He's a dope dude. And also, let's not forget to have yourselves the most wonderful evening, and remember to stay weird, fam. <laughs>